If you've been with the channel long enough, you'll probably be able to list my favorite watch brands. But what I've never revealed are the brands I don't like. <laughs> Maybe one or two. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today, I'm gonna tell you five brands steeped in horological history that I probably would never own a watch from. Now listen, these views are my own. I'm not picking a fight. It's not a personal attack on your firstborn child. There are brands I love that I know a lot of you don't. And this is what makes the world go round. Today's a chance for me to detox, to really let it all out, you know? Are you ready? Let's go. So the first brand I don't particularly like is Invicta. Invicta is the Latin for invincible. And this watch brand was established in 1837 in Switzerland. The main goal for the brand at the time of establishing was to create fine Swiss watches at an affordable price. Invicta made some lovely watches Great vintage watches. Look at this chronograph, beautifully designed. You know, very proud to own these ones, I tell you. But there were two big things that changed Invicta for good. One was the quartz crisis in the 70s. Sales for mechanical watches went and Invicta pretty much ceased to be. But that was until the 90s when Invicta was bought by a US investment company. It was at that point when Invicta obviously decided what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is make Rolex clomage. Cheers. Are you with me? So when you look on the surface with Invicta today, you will see most of their watches are Rolex knockoffs. Very well made with a Seiko NH35 inside and a good water resistance, but it's nothing to do with their Swiss history. The current CEO and president of the Invicta group now is Ial Lalo, and he's the one that signed off and gave the all clear for manufacturing of this thing. If you're not going to Invicta for a Submariner knockoff, I don't know what market they're going for. I mean, the most gorgeous, biggest, bulkiest, ugliest watches on the market. But listen, if you want a big bulky watch with a bezel that looks like a piece of rope, Invicta's your brand. You know, some may say this is an innovative brand and that no one else is doing these sort of watches, but there's a reason. They're flipping ugly. But the amount of money and design that goes into these watches, there are tons of these things. They must do well if Invicta just went whoa, 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 whoa. let's stop and come out with recreations of their watches in the past and you know what I'd probably buy one but instead we've got watches like this now prepare yourself okay take a deep breath and let me show you this one oh the 58 millimeter Invicta Gladiator need I say any more Okay, next up on my hit list is a brand you probably all know, Citizen. The only company that could make a busy dial look boring. First made wristwatches in 1931, the name Citizen was the brand for the every man or woman, which is fair enough. But Citizen have an incredible history. Based in Japan and competing with Seiko, Citizen came up with some amazing, innovative and pioneering stuff. They were beating Seiko left, right and centre with the first waterproof watch in Japan and the first watch to have a calendar. Not only were they producing fantastic high beat movements, they were making them very accurate, they made them very slim in 19. 1970s, Citizen came up with the first titanium watch. When quartz hit the 70s, Citizen were all over it. They made the first analog solar powered watch. In 1993, they made the first analog radio controlled watch. They were truly obsessed with accurate time. With modern day Citizens, I have never heard anyone having an issue with the QC. Unlike Seiko. The thing is, Citizen have gone down the eco drive route. It gets energy from sun and artificial light. Seiko have concentrated a lot more time, money and energy on mechanical movements and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of watch enthusiasts prefer Seiko. Not only that but for me the designs just don't speak to me. As I said they do very busy dials but they just look boring. When they do do simple dials it's very boring looking. If I could relate it to a colour, very beige. I'm not saying that Citizen have never made a decent looking watch but despite their innovations in diving as well as aviation watches I've just never found one nice enough to buy. Now, for obvious reasons, you don't hear this name said a lot at the minute, not even from the great Jody at Just One More Watch, but I am talking about Vostok, and I'm going to give you two from the same brand. 
ish. I believe that the rocket Yuri Gagarin was in as he shot up to space and became the first man in space was called Vostok. So a watch company that was already producing watches in Russia changed their name to Vostok for commemoration sakes. Before we talk about vintage Vostok, I've got to talk about Vostok Europe because I'm sorry, but these are some of the hideous, most ugliest watches I have ever seen in my life. You usually see this watch brand on shopping channels selling at half price. I cannot believe these get sold, especially from watch enthusiasts. Most of them are as thick as ashtrays. They do use GTLS tubes, which is quite cool, but the cool certainly stops there. Yeah. So two designers in the 60s from Vostok were given the job to create a dive watch that could work down at depths of 200 meters. This was for the Soviet frogmen. Vostok had very little manufacturing capabilities at the time compared to the Swiss watch brands. With that in mind, they came out at the time with quite innovative ideas. The case back is comprised of two pieces and the design of it combined with the acrylic crystal is that the deeper the watch goes, the more water resistant it is. Predominantly the cases and the bezels are made of brass and chrome plated. The bezel is friction only, bi-directional without any ratcheting at all. The movement was supposed to be very reliable and easy to regulate 19,800 beats per hour so that's 2.75 hertz when you unscrew the crown it gets all floppy that's because the crown detaches from the stem meaning it's much harder to break the stem off the movement which I've never had a problem with before but since those 60s and 70s the watch hasn't changed one bit and it's almost as if this has happened Nikolai the boss has given us a chance to put sapphire crystal on it Meh. Nikolai we are now able to put a movement in it that has a higher beat than my child's toy robot. <laughs> Nikolai, it can now be fully stainless steel. <laughs> Now there is a huge cult following with Vostok and I can sort of see it. They're not very expensive and you can have a good tinker with the movement and they're good for modding. These watches are great for two types of people. One, a person that's just getting into mechanical movements. Two, someone that's just started to tinker with mechanical movements. For me, this is a brand that has been forced on us to love. It's loved by the watch community, especially on YouTube, but there's no one out here in the watch space that actually says they're rubbish. There are so many different pictures on their dials and to be fair there isn't one nice one there's just one that you'd sort of settle on like the tank one but anyway Vostok for me no thank you Tisso, my good friend. Established in 1853, tremendous history. One of the most recognizable logos in the watch world. In the past, they've sponsored many sports, such as basketball, rugby, ice hockey, motorsport, cycling, and even fencing. For me though, in 2023, Tisso has sort of forgotten themselves. Now it's not their fault. One, they are owned by the Swatch Group and have been turned into a strategic brand to get a consumer on the first step of Swiss watches. Although Tissot have been going since 1853, there aren't many watches that they do now. You can see a direct link from in the 40s, 50s and 60s. You can see blatant attacks at the homage route with the PRX. All of Tissot's designs just look a bit cheap from the horrible colours they use to the T balance on the seconds hand and just the sizes of these watches. If they're not too big, they're too small. Now I feel sorry for Tissot. Sorry that they didn't get involved in the military game back in the 30s and 40s. If you look at Hamilton, they basically based their whole image of reimagining their whole military catalogue. This not only makes us watch enthusiasts love them, but with their military designs, Hollywood starts a call-in. You don't see many Tissots on the silver screen. The last four have been affordable brands. This one is by far affordable and I think probably has turned into a one-trick pony and don't seem bothered about it. I am talking about Audemars Piguet. Established in Switzerland, 1875, this Holy Trinity company made the first minute repeater watch. In 1899, they released the first grand complication pocket watch. Minute repeater, alarm, perpetual calendar, deadbeat seconds, chronograph, and split seconds. In 1925, they made the thinnest pocket watch and their mechanical movements are some of the most beautifully made things on this planet. Proper luxury. In the 70s, when the quartz crisis hit, instead of AP going, Oh no, we need to make a quartz watch. They asked Mr. Gerald Genter, could you make us a luxury sports watch, please? And in 1973 was the first release of the Royal Oak. I have to say that this thing is very beautiful. Been plagiarized to 
death. Hello PRX, but this has to be one of the most copied watches in history. Since that time, it's been Royal Oak. Royal Oak, Royal Oak, Royal Oak, Royal Oak. In fact, when you type in Aldemar Gay in Google, what do you get? Just a hell of a bunch of Royal Oaks. Now there are other watches. In 1993, a beast was released. The offshore Royal Oak. Oh, absolutely horrible, big, chunky watches. I personally don't know too many people that would actually wear. These futuristic handcuffs sell for enormous amounts of money. And if I'm being totally honest, they look like Invictors. In fact, if I was to show you one of these watches nice and quick, whoop, and then this one, whoop, you'd probably say that they came from the same company. Obviously, Audemars Piguet have other watches, like the Code 1159 and the Star Wheel. There's no denying that AP makes some amazing movements, and they quite rightly are held in very high regard. But let me leave you with this watch. Ha! Ah, the Royal Oak Concept Split Seconds Chronograph GMT. I mean... The Death Star looks smaller than this. Obviously catering for those that want to show off their wealth. And there's no problem with that. But it's goddamn ugly, isn't it? <laughs> so there you go. Five brands I'm not particularly in love with. Nor will I probably ever buy a watch from them. Again, I'm not trying to have a pop at you. Oh, but it sure gives me a lot of relief. Just to, you know, get it all out there in the open, you know. What's other things I can get out? I hate tomato ketchup. I hate mint choc chip ice cream. Peanut butter and jam shouldn't go together. And I hate the sport Cricket! Ooh, oh, I feel much better. This is a therapy session not only for me, but also for you. So tell me, what are the brands you don't like? Sometimes I think we're peer pressured to like a certain brand. And if we're going against the norm, it's like, Hey, what do you mean you don't like it? You're made to feel sort of weird or something. This is why we're able to have so many amazing brands out there doing so many different things. Some we love, some we don't love. And I'll just leave you with this. I may not like Invicta watches, but what other brand has the ball? to put a display case back on a quartz movement. Ballsy. If you've watched till the end, thank you so much. Like a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector channel? Just click here. Ho oh, ho, and join. And if I got you for a few minutes, why don't you check this show out? Far less controversy here. Oh, good show though. Good show, worth a view. I definitely look at it. Go click it, go on. I've got long. Go on, click it, click, click it. Click it.